The Polar Express film is officially 20 years old as of me making this film. And I've never seen it, if you can believe that. I mean, I'm a train guy, we've got O-Gage trains, there's a Polar Express right behind me. Why haven't I seen the film? I finally did. And I wanted to kind of weigh in on my thoughts on that and share some stuff with you guys. In Christmas of 2023, I made this Polar Express for my son, but I wanted to make it book accurate. And that's because my son and myself have never seen the Polar Express film, but we have read the book that was published in 1985 by Chris Van Allsburg. It's the same story that you're all used to with the film. It just isn't 96 minutes long and made for IMAX. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the film is something that I actually actively avoided watching for 20 years. And mostly because, well, I wasn't really in the right mindset when I saw the trailers for the film. I was 18 years old, a freshman in college, when this movie came out. And yeah, the trailers just didn't really paint the same picture that I had seen when I was reading that book with my parents as a kid. I have lots of fond memories of not just Christmas traditions, but the Polar Express story being one of them. And so this film coming out with roller coaster rides and all these zany things happening just seemed like a cartoon world, regardless of whether it was CGI or not, um, just seemed like this strange abstract compared to the story that I was used to. Um, it didn't really fit the same vein of the writing of the book, so I skipped it. Now through the years of me avoiding the film, I've managed to see clips and pieces and hear music and all that stuff from it. And I'll be like, oh, what's that song from? Oh, it's Josh Groban, it's from the Polar Express. I'm like, oh, well, maybe the film wasn't that bad. That seems like a nice enough song. I didn't know that it has nothing to do with the movie and it just happens in the end credits, but whatever. So when I got into O-Gage Trains, you kind of can't get into O-Gage and skip the Polar Express because Lionel probably wouldn't be around were it not for this movie because merchandising, merchandising, where the real money from the movie is made. They put the name on everything. Polar Express the t-shirt. Are you guys getting this baseball reference yet? I hope so. <laughs> That's one of my favorite films. But so yeah, uh, Lionel probably wouldn't be around at least in its current sta uh, status were it not for the Polar Express and the massive uh, sales phenomenon that making toy trains would have on them. And I also noticed at the end of the film, uh, Little Hero Boy even has a Lionel train set going underneath his tree. So uh, that's another great little snippet in there that I, I did enjoy. But so I finally watched it. I finally said, hey, you know what? It's 20 years old. My son's been asking about watching the movie. He's seen bits and pieces. I've seen bits and pieces. We've never seen the whole thing together. Let's watch it together. And the first, the whole intro um, is capture, capturing the kind of attitude and feeling that I got from the book. And so I'm, oh my gosh, am I gonna get proven wrong here? This looks, this looks great. I mean, there's a little bit of Uncanny Valley going on with some of this early CGI, but I can look past that. The story's great, nice music in the background. He's getting on, Tom Hanks is nailing his part. Yeah, hot chocolate dancers. Oh, well, I mean, we've seen this clip before and he loves it anyways, that was fun. And then pretty much from the ticket flying around to the hobo is where we lost my son. My son is five and he went upstairs to go do something else because he was a little weirded out by the hobo. I called him back down when uh, they got back in the cab of the locomotive. I figured he'd like that. And then that gets a little bit intense and there's all these things going on. I'm like, this isn't really a kid's movie, is it? I mean, it's a kid's story, but some of the themes and some of the stuff going on isn't exactly for him. Maybe he'll enjoy it more when he's older. So my son completely checks out. We do other stuff and I pick up watching the rest of the film by myself after he's gone to bed. Because I wanna see this thing front to back. I'm already in it. I might as well finish the thing, right? And then that's where I start to reaffirm why I thought I could skip the Polar Express. Because 18 year old me 
was right. All the fluff and filler, all the stuff that isn't Chris Van Allsburg's writing, gets a little weird. Now, some of it's good, um, but none of it was like earth shattering, like, oh man, I really feel like they did a lot of wonderful world building, as they like to call it in the, the film world. Take a ride on the Polar Express. I felt like every single scene that was a roller coaster was just a shameless plug for, go watch this in the IMAX. We're trying to push people into movie theaters. We don't care if it's gonna make a good movie at the end of the day. We just want you to go see this thing so you can go, oh, and get seasick in the theater. Adventure can take you to the party. I feel like there were at least four instances that were just, ha, ah, it's roller coaster time, cool. Just for the sake of making it fun to watch in an IMAX theater with 3D or something like that. And none of us have, you know, IMAX 3D home theater system, so that's kind of a gimmick. And then the rest of the stuff with the marionettes and the hobos back again. And then they're, you know, stuck on the North Pole and the observation car slides away. And um, I hope I'm spoiling stuff for you. Actually, everyone literally watching this video has probably seen this and is thinking, that's my favorite part. What are you talking about, Datafied? And none of those scenes really add to the story that I love. But thankfully, the story that I love is still in there. I can literally chop out all of the filler and be left with the scenes that actually are pulled directly from the book. And sure, the, it'd probably be like 30 minutes long instead, but it's done well. The illustrations that are in the book translate really well to this CGI kind of stuff that they were doing with it. I really visually enjoyed what they did with some of those scenes. Although I could have done without the bending train track going up that mountain. That, that one they missed. But the rest of the scenes, like the wolves and uh, going over the, the frozen ice to the North Pole, um, all these scenes that I have stuck in my head from the book translated really well to the film. And all the text and dialogue and Tom Hanks also being the narrator. Um, that stuff, they nailed that stuff. And those are the things that I feel like when you say that you love a film, you don't say you love it because, oh man, that, that scene with the marionettes was just so cool. How they scared that kid and he was, you know, you know, being a puppeteer from the, from the rooftop or whatever. Or, oh, I love the caribou scene. That's just so cool when the cotter pins up in the air and, and all this other crazy stuff. Your favorite parts in the movie are probably the heartwarming parts. And the heartwarming parts is the whole book. <laughs> so, if you haven't read the book, which I am still slightly flabbergasted at the amount of comments that I've seen on my Polar Express train video that I made last Christmas of, I didn't know there was a book, or I've never read the book. On the one hand, I feel like you're missing out. On the other hand, the movie does do a really good job of capturing the moments of the book. So pretty much, if you have a favorite part of the movie that isn't a roller coaster scene, it's probably from the book. So the filler let me down and uh, I was a little bit bummed with that. But overall, I'm really happy that they still captured the magic of the story of, you know, of what Chris Van Allsburg wrote back in 1985. So 38 year old me, have I been okay without watching the film? Yeah, um, I can go back to just watching YouTube clips and such, that's, that's fine. Do I love the book? Absolutely. If that bias hasn't been uh, abundantly clear, then uh, you haven't been listening. So The Polar Express is still a great story. If you like the film, that's great. If you like the book like we do, that's great too. And I really feel like the message is still there, both in the story and in the film. And the film doesn't do anything really better, per se, than the book does. It just puts it to motion. And the book lets you imagine that motion. And I feel like that's something that's getting lost, especially on younger kids these days. They're so into videos and the video games and all these things where nothing's left to the imagination. It's just laid out there for them. But when you read a book or you share a book with somebody and there's 
illustrations to start making that picture for you, but then you can imagine the train going up the mountain. You can imagine the dance number with hot chocolate, if you like. That to me, that wonder and that magic that books have is something you're never gonna get from a movie because it's just laid it out for you. And I think that's what makes the book special to me, especially as a dad, as I share that with my son. Now we're gonna run this Polar Express this winter and uh, have a blast with it. And I already know because I've already asked him, hey son, do you wanna watch the movie or read the book? And he didn't even hesitate when I asked which he preferred. So we're gonna keep reading and we're gonna have a blast with it. And thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of it. Have you read the book yet? How many times have you seen the video? Uh, the movie? Is it a favorite of yours? Do you have crit criticisms of it? Just let us know in the comments. Leave a like, subscribe, and uh, check out the, uh, the train that I made last year. See you later, guys. <laughs> Make him talk again, Colin.